In this video, I'll go over the three fundamental movements that you can do with the cobot, which are move J, move L, and move P. And I'll also go over the relative differences that you can see between the three of them when you're programming the cobot. Before I show that, I'll also show the process to include the move and waypoint commands in the cobot. Now in the program panel, when you add a move command from the node list on the left, a move J command with a single waypoint is added and move J is the default movement type that the cobot has. To set the waypoint that you want the cobot to travel to, select the set waypoint option and move the cobot to the position that you want either by using the free drive option or the teach magnet UI. After finalizing the position, press OK to bind that position to the selected waypoint. They can now repeat this process for as many waypoints as you want by using the waypoint command from the node panel. Now the way the move commands work is by implementing something called inverse kinematics which calculates the necessary joint angles required to achieve a certain position and orientation of the end effector. Like you can see here in this animation if we set the end effector's position through C, B and A move automatically to achieve the end effector position that is required or the orientation that is required. So we'll start with the default command move J where J stands for joint trajectory or move. To calculate a joint move, the current position or pose of the cobot is set as the starting point and the waypoint that we set manually is set as a goal point. The move J planner calculates the inverse kinematics only for these two positions and performs linear interpolation to ensure a smooth transition from the start joint angles to the goal joint angles. This usually results in a curved end effector path. Move L on the other hand, where L stands for linear move, employs a Cartesian trajectory principle where a straight line is drawn between the start and goal positions and the end effector is forced to follow that line. Now this means that the inverse kinematics are calculated for every point from start to goal. It is cumbersome and it leads to jittery joint motion sometimes but it does have the advantage of staying faithful to the line which is pretty advantageous if you wish to do some precision gluing or drawing operation for it. Move P is used to create curved paths and the fundamental difference between move L and move P is the usage of blends. When presented with multiple waypoints, move L will traverse straight lines, stopping at each waypoint before starting for the next one. Move P, on the other hand, will maintain the same speed throughout and it does this by curving the end effector around the waypoint instead of arriving at it. This curve is called a blend and the radius of this curve can be modified in the teach pendant. The primary use case is to use this waypoint blend principle to make circular paths. You can see how the cobot is able to move to the next waypoint much faster because of the move P command. You can select the type of move command you want for the cobot by selecting the move node in the robot program and selecting the type of move command that you want from the drop down on the right side. On comparing the three move commands by executing them on the same path, move P completes a path the fastest, move L takes the longest amount of time to complete the path. That being said, which move command should you use? If you only want point-to-point -point traversal without traversing a specific path, pick move J. If you wish to follow a specific path, then pick move L if you want to traverse the intended path in its entirety, or else use move P instead. This simple table should give you a general idea of what each move command would typically be used for. You should now be able to distinguish between the pros and cons of each move command when programming operations on the cobot. 